2021 was one of those years where both nothing and everything happened all at the same time. So let's take a look back at the lubricant industry's 2021, and let's start with some of the developments in the PCMO space. So ASEA dropped its new 2021 light duty specs, which saw the deletion of A3B3 as well as C1, and the introduction of the A7B7 category as well as C6 for low viscosity, protection against LSPI, turbo coking, as well as a suite of updated tests. The major theme, though, was electrification and sustainability, and COP26 was an obvious trigger for that. But honestly, the bigger trigger was the Tesla share price, which took off to create the world's first trillion-dollar automotive manufacturer. I can barely believe that that exists. But Tesla continued to knock it out of the park as they ramped production, they built new gigafactories, and they released new models like the Platt. At the same time, we had Rivian staging the biggest IPO of the year in the biggest ever year for IPOs. On top of that, we had pretty decent uptake in the Lucid SPAC, and I think that showed once and for all that in the eyes of Wall Street, the future of the auto market is definitely electric vehicles. The legacy OEMs also jumped on board. There were major announcements from most of them, but the ones that made probably the most news would have been the Mark E, the Ford F-150 Lightning, as well as the electric Hummer. Now, all of this activity in the automotive space triggered a wave of announcements and activity in the lubricants market. So we had industry events and announcements from lubricant manufacturers. There were new products like uh, Repsol brought out their EV fluid line. Then we had Valvoline with their XEV fluid line, which was released in China. Golf brought out uh, the ELEC fluid line. And there was also a technology partnership formed between Castrol and Williams F1 Racing to develop a new raft of EV fluids. Now these join Mobile EV, Shell E fluids, as well as Total's Quartz EV and Rubia EV as pre-existing electric vehicle offers. On the other hand, uh, no points to any of these marketing teams for these names. Where's the creativity? <laughs> They're all the same. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, if we continue on the racing theme, e-fuels were a really, really hot topic this year. So Formula One committed to a uh, low carbon fuel strategy with activity to continue through to 2025. Porsche also focused on relatively similar solutions with uh, a firm commitment in the Porsche Super Cup, as well as a partnership with Siemens to manufacture e-fuels in Chile at a pilot plant. Now, depending on how these series choose to manufacture the technology and what kind of base oil strategy they use, we should expect to see engine oil formulations respond in due course. Now, this was followed by major hydrogen and ammonia combustion announcements from some of the major industrial as well as marine OEMs. These were complete with all the staples of the genre. So generally, northern European executives talking seriously into camera. There were executives talking in front of a body of water, executives talking in a forest. Why they need to stage all of these, I don't really know. Uh, however... Cummins, Yen Barker, and Wartzilla all announced uh, sort of hydrogen-ready engines, and I believe MTU did as well. And then in the shipping game, we had the likes of Maersk, MAN, as well as WinGD, all getting in on the ammonia slash methanol game. Now, details of the lubric lubrication strategy for these new technologies are pretty silent, um, so we should expect to see that as a theme for 2022. Now, the base oil market also followed the sustainability theme. The major announcement of this year was probably the sale of Nest's renewable base oil business to Chevron. Now this sees Chevron take on ownership of the Next Base uh, brand, and that builds on the application of their ISO de-waxing technology to the production of fully renewable base oils at the Novi plant in Texas. Now that Novi plant is actually a joint venture between Chevron, Cosan, American Refining Group, H&R, as well as Amaris. Now, on this channel, we actually spoke with Biosynthetic Technologies, as their estolides continue to make an impact on the market as well. If there was one other major theme of this year, it was supply chain. Now, 
all industries were affected to a certain extent through 2020 and 2021. But the lubricants industry in particular was acutely affected by both COVID and non-COVID events. So both base oil and additive markets continued to suffer through that January deep freeze where that intense cold front that went through the southern states in the US shut down most of the petrochemical industry. And that triggered a raft of force majeures, both in base oil and additive markets. This kind of exacerbated existing supply bottlenecks, which were a hangover from COVID shutdowns in 2020. Then in March, the Suez Canal was blocked and it demonstrated once again how critical that particular route is to the world supply chains. Knock-on effects were pretty noticeable worldwide, uh, but just as, as an example, European ports had a lot of difficulty meeting the demand for you know, the sudden spike in traffic. We had container ships discharging containers basically wherever they could in order to return back to Asia where several weeks of cargo had built up and they were available at inflated prices. So in some cases, ships were just prioritizing backloading of empty containers and leaving urgent deliveries at the quay. Um, we also saw congestion at Antwerp and Rotterdam, and that then delayed barge operations into mainland Europe. On the other hand, it was a rich vein of material for memes throughout 2021. And then in June, we had the ChemTool Greece manufacturing facility burn to the ground. Fortunately, there was no loss of life, but from a supply chain perspective, it continued to stress Greece supply chains, particularly for OEM labeled products, um, which were largely manufactured at the ChemTool facility. And then on top of all of this, we had the continuing container shortage. Vessel prices skyrocketed due to severe imbalances in the import and export markets. And that was mostly brought about by a differing severity in lockdowns across the world. Probably the most visible example of this was the Port of Los Angeles, which experienced its busiest period in its 114 year history and left many ships stranded off the coast. If you'd like a little bit more detail on some of the supply chain challenges, check out my interview with uh, Trevor Gauntlet. So 2021, what a year, huh? I feel like we said this last year though. Uh, let's hope that 2022 is uh, a little better for all of us, but expect to see big changes in the lubricant industry.